welcome to your new career in the mushroom industry. We want to help you discover the world of mushrooms, the miracle of how this unique vegetable grows, and its amazing versatility and value. You'll also learn about the important food hygiene laws that govern us in order to protect our customers, and the safety guidelines that help us to protect ourselves. Partway through the program, you'll leave the video to tour the farm, so you can see every stage of the mushroom process for yourself. Then we'll help you to master the skills of mushroom picking. You'll discover there's a lot more to it than most people imagine. Finally, after you've had the opportunity to try out your new skill, the program will give you an opportunity to discuss mushroom picking with your supervisor. But you don't have to wait until then to raise any questions you may have. Your supervisor is always there to help. We only like to keep the mushrooms in the dark. The mushroom is one of the most fascinating growing things on Earth. Everything else that grows fits neatly into either the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom. As fungi, mushrooms are classed as plants, but they grow in complete darkness, an ability shared only with bacteria. There's no doubt that mushrooms have a big future. Cholesterol-free, low in calories and fat, they're just made for the modern healthy diet. From summer salads, to winter casseroles and curries, or a host of vegetarian dishes. They really are the most versatile vegetable of all. That's why the number we eat is increasing all the time. There are different kinds of mushroom. You've probably seen them in the supermarket. You'll be working mostly with the common cultivated mushroom, Agaricus bisporus. It has a cap with gills underneath, supported by its stalk and roots. Agaricus bisporus is grown all over the world in special growing houses where the temperature and humidity are carefully controlled. It grows at a staggering rate. A button mushroom will double to the size of a closed cup mushroom in just 24 hours and the closed cup will grow into a large, flat mushroom only two or three days later. Mushrooms are extremely perishable and easily damaged in transit. That's why refrigerated transport is generally used to ensure they arrive safely. Inside the houses, mushrooms are grown in three main types of container. Either thick plastic bags placed on the floor in rows with walkways between for access for picking. Wooden trays which can be stacked up to five high to make the most of the floor space. Or modern metallic shelves. These can also be stacked but have more space between them. Whichever type of container you're working with, you'll find the principles of mushroom picking are just the same. The people who buy our mushrooms may be the buyer for a supermarket chain, a food processor, or a wholesaler. At the very end of the chain, of course, is the consumer. Whoever they are, wherever in the food chain, we've got to keep them happy. They are our customers. They pay our wages. Mushroom growing is a very competitive business. If we can't get it right, there's always somebody else who can. Mushrooms are grown on a specially prepared compost. The base for the compost is wheat straw. We bring it in from the farms in large bales. We wet it over several days, and as microbial action takes place, it gradually turns from yellow to brown to black. We add chicken manure or horse manure along with gypsum. We then pile the compost into a stack 
and turn it several times with a large machine to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. After two weeks, our compost is ready. Well, almost. Before we can use it, it has to be pasteurized by heating to kill off harmful microorganisms. This takes another week. Then we can add the spawn to the compost. Spawn is cereal grain colonized by mushroom mycelium. The grain forms the early food source for the mushroom as it begins to grow. We put the compost in special rooms where the temperature and moisture levels are controlled very carefully. It stays there for another two weeks. Next, we spread a layer of a mixture of peat and chalk over it and take the containers to the growing houses. Once again, the temperature and moisture levels are carefully controlled. The first mushroom pinheads begin to appear in 12 to 14 days. This is called the first flush. This is picked, our first harvest from the crop. The grower then waters the bed again. After another five to six days, the second flush appears. This is also harvested. We then repeat the process to produce a third flush. It's possible to produce fourth and fifth flushes, but most mushrooms come in the first and second flushes. In 1990, the government passed a law to make sure that all food for sale in this country is safe to eat. It's called the Food Safety Act. It's basically a set of simple, common-sense guidelines. Just like everyone else in the food industry, everyone who works in the mushroom industry must abide by them. The penalties for breaking the guidelines are very severe. The government employs environmental health officers to make regular checks. If you were caught breaking the guidelines, you personally could be fined up to £20,000 for each offence, or face two years in prison. Also, the mushroom farm could be closed. So, here are the guidelines. Tie your hair back securely under a snood, or use a hairnet and hat. Do this before putting on your overall to stop loose hairs from falling onto it. Wash your hands after using the toilet. After handling money. Or cigarettes. Or food. Always run water into the sink before washing your hands with antibacterial soap. Put on clean food hygiene overalls every day when you arrive at the farm. Don't wear them away from the farm as they will carry dust and possibly disease. If you carry a notepad or pen, always keep it in your inside pocket. And always wear plastic gloves. Don't wear jewellery. Only a single wedding ring is allowed. Someone could end up with an unwanted surprise. Keep your fingernails short to avoid damaging the mushrooms and don't wear nail varnish. Most mushroom farms have nail brushes at each sink. Use them to keep your nails clean. Don't wear perfume or aftershave at work because they can affect the mushroom's flavour. Eat, drink or smoke only in the designated areas, never in the growing houses. Always wash your hands afterwards as they will have picked up germs from your mouth. Leave all your personal items, such as coats and bags, in the designated areas. Don't take them onto the farm with you. Never sneeze, <coughs> spit or cough over the mushrooms as this too will spread germs. You wouldn't fancy eating these, would you? And if you've suffered a stomach upset, sickness, vomiting or diarrhea, a skin complaint or a cough, always tell your supervisor before you start back to work. He or she will advise you what to do. Simple, aren't they? But for all our sakes, take rules seriously. Stick to them and don't get caught out. <coughs>
Before you go on your tour of the farm, we want you to be aware of the dangers. So not only can you look round, but also work here in safety. A lot of water is used in the growing of mushrooms. Sometimes floors will be damp and slippery. So make sure you always wear sensible flat shoes with grips on the soles and never ever run. Take care and always walk around with your eyes open. Watch out for anything used in the normal course of mushroom growing which might trip you up. Look out for hose pipes and wires. When the growers are watering in other growing houses, their hoses will often lie across your path. Watch out for moving vehicles such as forklifts or tractors and trailers. If you hear a horn, stand out of the way and wait for the vehicle to pass safely. When you're picking mushrooms, if you're picking from trays, you may use a ladder to reach the top. If so, make sure you attach it to the bed safely and test it before you use it. Good lighting is important for you to work safely. So, if you notice a light is out in your area, point it out to your supervisor. She will arrange for it to be fixed. The general principle is simple. Always take care to behave in a safe and sensible manner, for everyone's sake, including your own. And never ever do anything that could put yourself or one of your colleagues at risk. If you do have an accident, you must report it to your supervisor. She will record it in the accident book. Not only is this the law, but a record of accidents helps our health and safety representative to prevent them from happening again. Enjoy your tour of the farm. When you come back, we'll introduce you to the skills of picking mushrooms. Welcome back. Time now for you to begin to learn the skills of picking mushrooms. First of all, let's look at the equipment you will use. You will have some form of rack or workbench on which to place the punnets into which you pick. This rack, for example, has two tiers. The bottom tier for large punnets, which hold three kilos of usually larger mushrooms. And the top one for the smaller ones, holding from 150 to 500 grams in punnets. You will have a bucket in which to put the stalks or chogs that you will cut off. This chog bucket has hooks for attaching it to the side of the growing trays. If you work on a farm where mushrooms are grown in plastic bags, you'll keep your punnets on a jig. If you're picking from shelves or trays, you will need a ladder to reach the upper levels. You will have a sharp knife to cut the mushrooms. Many mushroom pickers prefer this type. It has an orange handle and a curved blade, which is sharp on the inside of the curve. If you lose your knife, it could cause one of your colleagues a serious injury or end up in a punnet of mushrooms. For that reason, your supervisor will probably keep a knife register. You will need to sign your knife out and in again for every shift. If you ever mislay your knife, tell your supervisor immediately before someone gets hurt. Now, we want to show you how to set up your equipment so that you can work as easily and as safely as possible. The principles are the same whether you're picking from wooden trays, metal shelves or plastic bags. Being in the right position with your equipment to hand will make your job both easier and safer. The most important thing is to make sure you don't put your back under any unnecessary strain. To lift your equipment safely, take care to lift it close to your body. Bend your knees and keep your back straight all the time. Look at this model. By bending your knees, keeping the item close to your body and looking in the direction in which you are going and keeping your heels flat on the ground, you keep your back straight and comfortable. But if you reach out in front of you and look down, you bend your back. 
lifting in this way is asking for back trouble in later life. This is so important, we'll go over it once more. Move close to the item. Bend your knees. Look straight ahead and lift the item close to your body, keeping your heels on the ground. That way you will keep your back nice and straight. Also take care not to reach or twist. Reaching and twisting might expend less energy in the short term, but it's much harder on your back. So always move your whole body to where the mushrooms are, rather than reaching and twisting your back. Remember, you only have one back, and it has to last you a lifetime. You are a crucial link in the chain. The quality of your work determines the quality of the product we sell, the price we can charge for it, and the company's reputation. Picking mushrooms is a highly skilled operation. They're extremely delicate and very easily damaged. Damaging mushrooms can reduce their value by over half and threaten the whole future of the company and your job. So always handle them gently. Imagine this were an egg. If you threw it, you would probably break it. In just the same way, if you throw a mushroom, you will ruin its quality and its value. You can't always see the bruising immediately, but it will certainly show by the time the customer sees it, and it will almost certainly be rejected. Now, before you begin, you must learn to recognize the five different mushroom sizes or grades. Button mushrooms are the smallest grade. They measure around 30 millimeters across. <laughs> 